Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Andrew Neufeld, and I sing in Comeback Kid. Formerly of Figure Four, what are your recollections of those days? How do they compare to these days? Um, those days, uh, a little bit more restriction in my life. Um, a little bit younger and trying to figure out, you know, everything going on. Pretty excited about touring Canada and the States. Um, we got to go to Brazil once, which was probably like one of the coolest things the band ever did. Um, but definitely, yeah, with Figure Four, I mean, it was just a lot of uh, a couple like struggles and recording in the studio, not really getting the best sounds we wanted, and then we just like kept on trying to progress and. Uh, get better recordings as recording gear was at that time kind of expanding and you know Pro Tools came about and everything happening um, and uh, but yeah I just felt like you know just younger and a little bit a lot more restricted and I'm a little bit older now and life's a little bit more open so that's kind of cool. Which ways were you restricted back then? Um, I just I just think in, in, like musically I think uh, you know, like I, Figure Four is a you know a heavy hardcore band, very straight to the point of what we want to do. So as far as like trying trying different things, it wasn't the most open band to trying new things. You know, um, we started out as a Christian band, and I'm not Christian anymore. So uh, just definitely like with like moral uh, uh, expectations, I guess that was a little bit more restricting. And um, I don't know. Just when you're younger, I think you're just kind of a little bit more self-conscious, and you got you, you you worry a little bit more about you know things that are going on around you. So so I, I, I think I'm a little bit more carefree as an adult. I would hope. If I can pinpoint, I guess you dropping Christianity. Was it that show you played with Hundred Demons in Montreal, where Bruce was singing about how God failed him? Was it that moment that you dropped Christianity? <laughs> no, Hundred Demons speeches on stage never were the. <laughs> defining moments in my life. Although they were really cool and I really wanted to mosh, it wasn't 100 Demon speeches that swayed me away from the Lord. <laughs> they can't get that much credit. <laughs> They're fucking heavy, but they can't get that much credit. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so what factors uh, had a hand in you know, you, uh, you're getting more open-minded? Um, I think it's just like, uh, uh, just gr I guess growing up and kind of just getting a little bit, um, just kind of, not not so much disinterested because I feel like I got more interested in spirituality and and um, like the meaning behind everything that I, I wanted to believe in, but just kind of like searching into it a little bit more. It came to the point where it's like you can't, um, you know. Uh, I think a lot of people uh, that are involved in Christianity or any kind of religion, it's it, it's the kind of thing where it's like. I know it's real because I can feel it. I feel it in my heart. And um, I had a good conversation with my best friend, um, Mike from Cancer Bat. I remember a long time ago, like, like we used to play in figure four together, and I remember talking to him, and it's just like, um, you know, I, I, I just, he, he was just saying, like, I can't, I can't base my, my whole life and my, my logic behind a feeling that I have, because I think a lot of people have feelings, and a lot of people feel certain ways about things. And um, I grew up with, with, uh, Kind of religion, though I didn't really want to ever call it religion. It, I, you know, I grew up with a lot of that, just just surrounded by that, and um, it was a really easy path for me to take. And I think that um, just just reading and and uh, just experiencing life and just I, I it, it wasn't where it wasn't at the point where I was like, you know what, I, I'm. I can prove Christianity wrong. It's not like that at all. Because I still think that maybe you know things in the Bible. Maybe some things happened. Maybe they didn't. Whatever. I'm not uh, questioning the validity of that. But it's just the point where I was saying I can't prove that what I believe is right. So I don't have enough evidence myself. So how can I? How can I? Um, you know. I think it was, I, a lot of my views were 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 a little bit. Uh, I was just I was just a younger kid, man. I, I started Figure Four when I was 16 years old. You know. So. First album by uh, like it was on Face Down Records, yes. Christian label. Mm -hmm. So even I guess the band has veered away. Um, with, with Comeback Kid, we were never uh, never wanted to be associated as, as a Christian band or anything. Um, but uh, when we started Comeback Kid, we like sent our demo out to everybody. We sent it out to Bridge Nine with T-shirts. We gave them a t-shirt, you know, and a CD, we're like, hey, they're like, maybe they'll sign us, you know? We sent it to them, Death Wish, um, all the big labels at the time, it was like, you know, 2000 or something like that, 2001, 
um, and I'd worked with Facedown before and they were interested in the band and some of the members were Christian, some were kind of in between or whatever, some weren't and um, so they agreed to do the record and it's like, fuck yeah, like they, they're honest label, honest uh, dudes, they have great distribution and so I think we would have been stupid not to release our record with them and they treated us well until we had to leave. And Christian labels as opposed to regular labels, right? do Christian labels go my, have better morals? No, definitely not. Okay. Yeah, it's every, every shady business. Sometimes Christian Christian labels are even shadier. I think. I think. I think that you can use the uh, the thing to kind of as a as a nice cover up image. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. George Bush is a Christian. You know what I mean? <laughs> are there any conspiracies? Oh, definitely. I mean, ever since 9/11, it's like kind of hard not to think about uh, conspiracy. You know that short change. Uh, uh, website or whatever. Loose change. Loose change. Yeah. Short time, sorry. And uh, I don't know. I, I honestly like with with um, with a higher up government and uh, just you know the powers that be that rule this world. It's pretty. I think you know we're just the little minions, dude. And everyone's kind of they got their they got their vibe going. They got their thing going. I would love if Obama won. I would actually probably be pretty excited if Obama won the election. And um, sorry. I would actually be pretty excited if Obama won the election, but do I, I think that it probably, I mean, some things will change, but I think things are probably going to be pretty much the same. Um, it's the same people that are running the country, same kind of mindset, and they pretty much have, they have pretty similar agendas from what I can see or what I've, you know, but, um, but yeah, I would be pretty excited. If, just the recent election, I voted Green, and uh, uh, of course, you know, conservatives were going to win. But you grew up in the 90s, prior to MySpace, prior to Facebook, social networking, mm -hmm. uh, internet hardcore labels, internet bands. How do you feel kids can, I guess, get a little more in touch with reality these days? <laughs> By getting off the computer and going to shows or hanging out and going and traveling around. I don't know. Like, uh... Yeah, dude, like, I remember, like, having to go to, like, a public library to use the internet to, like, book figure four tours, and, uh, you, you make phone calls from my parents' phone, and, um, sending letters, and, you know, so it's like... It, package with t-shirts. Yeah, the package, nine. packages with t-shirts <laughs> to Bridge 9. Now I can just send a, a link to our MySpace. Um, but, uh... How do people get in touch? I don't know. Just get out there, you know? Is this the first time your band get ripped? Yeah, first time my van got stolen. We thought, I'm still hoping that it'll turn up in some tow truck. It's some tow parking a lot, but I was, I was riding with Gravemaker at the beginning of this tour. Just one night, randomly, I decided to ride with Gravemaker, and that was the night that we were driving and the van flipped four times, and my friend that was riding with us too, he was like stuck under there for an hour, so we started the tour with six vans, and then that was five vans, and their vans were totaled, and now we have four vans because our van and trailer just got ripped off this morning. Fucking Montreal, eh? <laughs> How do you stay positive? I got to play an awesome show here, and, and dude, I'm on tour with Bane and Misery Signals and Shilude and Outbreak and Gravemaker, and I don't know, man. I'm I'm living a pretty awesome life right now, dude. It's like pretty pretty hard not to stay positive, positive. and I get to see some good friends tonight. And I don't know. And you get to I, I lost a few. I lost some clothes on a hard drive with some nice pictures on it and some music and stuff, but. Whatever. At least, I lost a guitar too, but the other guys lost, you know, thousands of dollars worth of equipment. So hopefully insurance will cover that. We'll see. And I don't know, we'll get a new van, I'm sure. I've had a little freak out already today. <laughs> a little punch. Say it? What'd you punch? Uh, I punched the back of the cab seat. I just went, ah. Oh. <laughs> Does that mean you're gonna mosh extra hard today? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> We're done? We're done. Cool. Great. Uh, do you have anything anything you want to plug or um Gravemaker, we just missed their set. One of the coolest new bands in hardcore right now. Uh, I used to play uh, in Figure Four with Bailey, plays in Gravemaker. Um, I got a new band called Sights and Sounds. We just finished recording with Devin Townsend out in DC. And um, the record should be out in March or April on Small Man in Canada. And I don't know what label it'll be on in the States, but Check it out, it's called Sights and Sounds.